All right, good morning. Ohio gozaimasu. Um, you will not, you might not be able to see me once I put the phone where I'm going to be putting it to read because uh, I'm waiting for the bus right now. But um, I wanted to get this done so that my phone could have a chance to do so. So make time for the Lord. Oh, no, where we at? Yeah, see, it's a lot darker in general. Just fine. All that matters is if you can hear me. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel, unto King Solomon in Jerusalem, that they might bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. And all the men of Israel assembled themselves unto King Solomon at the feast in the month Ethanim, which is the seventh month. And all the elders of Israel came, and the priests took up the ark, and they brought up the ark of the Lord and the tabernacle of the congregation, and all the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle, even those did the priests and the Levites bring up. And and King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel that were assembled unto him were with him before the ark, sacrificing sheep and oxen that could not be told nor numbered for multitude. And the priests brought in the ark of the covenant of the Lord unto his place, into the oracle of the house, to the most holy place, even under the wings of the cherubims. For the cherubims spread forth their two wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubims covered the ark and the staves thereof above. And they drew out the staves, that the ends of the staves were seen out in the holy place before the oracle, and they were not seen without, and there they are unto this day. There was nothing in the ark save the two tables of stone, which Moses put there at Horeb, when the Lord made a covenant with Sorry, a car pulled up and my eye just got like so gassed. I, I, I think that's the only word I can use. Uh, when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt, and it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of the Lord so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of the Lord then spake Solomon, the Lord said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. I have surely built thee in house to dwell in, a settled place for thee to abide in forever. And the king turned his face about and blessed all the congregation of Israel. And all the congregation of Israel stood. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which spake with his mouth unto David thy, my father, and hath with his hand fulfilled it, saying, Since the day that I brought forth my people Israel out of Egypt, I chose no city out of all the tribes of Israel to build an house, that my name might be therein. But I chose David to be over my people Israel. And it was in the heart of David, my father, my father to build an house for the name of the Lord God of Israel and the Lord said unto David my father whereas it was in thine house to it was in thine heart to build an house unto my name thou didst well that it was in thine heart nevertheless thou shalt not build the house but thy son that shall come forth out of thy loins he should he shall build the house unto my name and the Lord hath performed his word that he spake, and I am risen up in the room of David my father, and sit on the throne of Israel as the Lord promised, and have built an house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And I have set there a place for the ark wherein is the covenant of the Lord, which he made with our fathers when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. And Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands toward heaven 
And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven above or on earth beneath, who keepest covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart, who hast kept with thy servant David my father that thou promisedest him. Thou spakest also with thy mouth, and hast fulfilled it with thine hand as it is this day. Therefore now, Lord God of Israel, keep with thy servant David my father, that thou promised, promisedest him, saying, There shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel, so that thy children take heed to their way, that they walk before me as thou hast walked before me. And now, O God of Israel, let thy word, I pray thee, be verified, which thou spakest unto thy servant David my father. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven of heavens of heavens cannot contain thee, how much less this house that I have builded. Yet have thou respect unto the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee today, that thine eyes may be open toward this house night and day, that thine, even toward the place of which thou hast said, my name shall be there, that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make toward this place. And hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant and of thy people Israel, when they shall pray toward this place, and hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and when thou hearest, forgive. If any man trespass against his neighbor, and an oath be laid upon him to cause him to swear, and the oath come before thine altar in this house, then hear thou in heaven, and do, and judge thy servants, condemning the wicked to bring his way upon his head, and justifying the righteous, to give him according to his righteousness. When thy people Israel be smitten down before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee, and shall turn again, is it, did it say to thee? I tried to read it. Yeah, turn again to thee. Can you, thank you. Y'all, don't park at bus stops. I don't care. I, I don't care. I feel like that's just the rudest thing ever, especially if you see someone sitting there. The curb is rude. Anyway. And confess thy name and pray and make supplication unto thee in this house. Then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy people Israel and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest unto their fathers. When heaven is shut up and there is no rain, because they have sinned against thee, if they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin, when thou afflictest them, then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy servants and of thy people Israel, that thou teach them the good way and wherein they should walk and give rain upon thy land which thou hast given to thy people for an inheritance Where we? if there be in the land famine if there be pestilence blasting mildew locust or if there be caterpillar if their enemy besiege them in the land of their cities whatsoever plague whatsoever sickness there be what prayer and supplication soever be made by any man or by all thy people Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart, and spread forth his hands toward his house. Then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive, and do, and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest. For thou, even thou only, knowest the hearts of all the children of men that they may fear thee all the days that they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers. Moreover, concerning a stranger that is not of thy people, Israel, but cometh 
out of a far country for thy name's sake. For they shall hear of thy great name. Oh, my shirt scared me. It started blowing. I thought it was a cat underneath me. <laughs> Let's see. If thy people go out to battle against their enemy, whither so ever thou shalt send them and shall pray unto the Lord toward the city which thou hast chosen and toward the house that I have built for thy name, then hear thou in heaven their prayer and their supplication and maintain their cause. And if they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away, captives unto the land of the enemy far or near. Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land, whither they were carried captives, and repent, and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captive, saying, We have sinned and have done perversely, we have committed wickedness. And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. All right, I'm gonna stand up, because I feel like that's a good idea right now. Hold on. Uh, then hear thou pr uh, uh, Excuse me. Excuse me. My goodness, I hurt. Um, then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause, and forgive thy people that have sinned against thee in all their transgressions, wherein they have transgressed against thee, and give them compassion before them who carried them captive, that they may have compassion on them. For they be thy people and thine inheritance, which thou broughtest forth out of Egypt from the midst of the furnace of iron. That thine eyes may be open unto the supplication of thy servant and unto the supplication of thy people Israel to hearken unto them and all that they call for unto thee. For thou didst separate them from among all the people of the earth to be thine inheritance as thou spakest by the hand of Moses thy servant when thou broughtest our fathers out of Egypt, O Lord God. And it was so that when Solomon had made an end of praying all this prayer and supplication unto the Lord, he arose from before the altar of the Lord from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread up to heaven. And he stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice saying, Blessed be the Lord that the hath given rest unto his people Israel according to all that he promised. There hath not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant. The Lord our God be with us as he was, as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us, that he may incline our hearts unto him to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments which he commanded our fathers. And let these my words wherewith I have made supplication before the Lord be nigh unto the Lord our God day and night, that he maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel at all times, as the matter shall require that all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is none, none else. Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God to walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments as at this day. And the king and all Israel with him offered sacrifice before the Lord. And Solomon answered a sacrifice of peace offerings which he offered unto the Lord two and twenty thousand oxen and an hundred and twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the children of Israel dedicated the house of the Lord. The same day did the king hollow the middle of the court that was before 
the house of the Lord. For there he offered burnt offerings and meat offerings and the fat of the peace offerings, because the brazen altar that was before the Lord was too little to receive the burnt offerings. Uh, and meat offerings and the fat of the peace offerings. And at that time Solomon held a feast and all Israel with him, a great congregation from the entering in of Hamath unto the river of Egypt before the Lord our God seven days and seven days, even 14 days. On the eighth day he sent the people away and they blessed the king and went unto their tents joyful and glad of heart for all the goodness of the all the goodness that the Lord had done for David his servant and for Israel his people praise the Lord and it came to pass when Solomon had finished the building of the house of the Lord and the king's house and all Solomon's desire which he was pleased to do that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time as he had appeared unto him at Gibeon and the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication. That thou hast made before me, I have hallowed thy house, which thou hast built to put my name there forever and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. And if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked in integrity of heart and in uprightness to do according to all that I have commanded thee and wilt kill it literally says do not do that I have commanded thee and wilt kill keep praise the Lord and wilt keep my statutes and my judgments Sometimes words just daggone don't go together. It's not my fault. <laughs> but, again, you know, the Bible is proper English. If it's going to be proper English, it's proper English. But I'm glad some things change because that don't flow. Let me try it again. I have commanded thee and will keep my statutes and my judgments. Praise the Lord. I was wrong and that's okay. Then I will establish the throne of my, then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever, as I promised to David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. But if ye shall at all turn from following me, ye are your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have set before you. But go and serve other gods and worship them. Then, uh, then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them and this house, which I have hallowed for my name, which will I cast out of my sight. And Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. And at this house, which is high, everyone that passeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss, and they shall say, Why hath the Lord done thus unto this land and to this house? And they shall answer, Because they forsook the Lord their God, who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt, and have taken hold upon other gods, and have worshipped them and served them. Therefore hath the Lord brought upon them all this evil. And it came to pass at the end of twenty years, when Solomon had built two houses, the house of the Lord and the king's house. Now Hiram the king of Tyre had furnished Solomon with cedar trees and fir trees and with gold according to all his desire. That then King Solomon gave Hiram 20 cities in the land of Galilee. And Hiram came out from Tyre to see the cities which Solomon had given him and they pleased him not. And he said, what cities are these which thou hast given me, my brother? Oh, Lord. And he called them the land of Cabal, or Cabal, unto this day. And Hiram sent to the king six score talents of gold. And this is the reason of the Le Levi levy, which King Solomon raised. For to build the house of the Lord and his own house in Milo, or Milo, 
and the wall of Jerusalem, and Hazar and Megiddo and Gezer. For Pharaoh king of Egypt had gone up and taken Gezer and burnt it with fire and slain the Canaanites that dwelt in the city and given it for a present unto his daughter, Solomon's wife. And Solomon built Gezer and Beth Horon the nether, and Baalith and Tadmor in the wilderness in the land, and the cities of store that Solomon had, and cities for his chariots, and cities for his horsemen, horsemen, and that which Solomon desired to build in Jerusalem, and in Lebanon, and in all the land of his dominion, and all the people that were left of the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, which were not of the children of Israel their children that were left after them in the land whom the children of Israel also were not able utterly to destroy upon those did Solomon a Levi that whole sentence got messed up whom the children of Israel also were not able to utterly destroy upon those did Solomon levy a tribute of bond service unto this day but of the children of Israel did Solomon make no bondmen, but they were men of war, and his servants, and his princes, and his captains, and rulers of his chariots, and his horsemen. These were the chief of the officers that were over Solomon's work, 550 which bear rule over the people that wrought in the work. But Pharaoh's daughter came up out of the city of David, <laughs> out of the city of David unto her house which Solomon had built for her then did he build Milo and three times in a year did Solomon offer burnt offerings and peace offerings upon the altar which he built unto the Lord and he burnt incense upon the altar that was before the Lord so he finished the house and King Solomon made a navy of ships in Ezion, Ezon Geber, which is beside Eloth, on the shore of the Red Sea in the land of Edom. And Hiram sent in the navy his servants, shipmen that had knowledge of the sea with the servants of Solomon. And they came to Ophir and fetched from thence gold 420 talents and brought it to King Solomon. Ooh. You heard it? God is good. You heard it here first. I'm weak. That's good. And when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. And she came to Jerusalem with a very great train, with camels that bear spices, and very much gold and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her all her questions. There was not anything hid from the king which he told her not. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom and the house that he had built, and the meat of his table, and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers, and their apparel, and his cupbearers, and his ascent, ascent, ascent. There we go. And his ascent, by which he went up into the house of the Lord. There was no more spirit in her. And she said to the king, "It was true. It was a true report that I had heard of the Lord." This whole sentence is harder to read. from the book itself because the words are tinier even though I'm farsighted I believe which is also highly debatable at this point because uh, I'm not dealing with contacts no more I like them though so that's actually not true but I want to see where, where my eyesight is gonna go like I want to see what we can manifest with that but I like glasses they're cute the bus is here. Uh, I tried to finish this. Okay. Hold on. Uh -huh. 
don't know where they're about to park. But. that I heard in mine own land of thy acts and of thy wisdom. Howbeit I believed not the words until I came and mine eyes had seen it, and behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceedeth the fame which I heard. Happy are thy men, happy are these thy servants, which stand continually before thee, and that hear thy wisdom. Blessed be the Lord thy God, which delighteth in thee delighted in thee to set thee before hold on let me get a second which delighted in thee to set thee on the throne of Israel because the Lord loved Israel forever therefore made he thee king to do judgment and justice and she gave the king an hundred and twenty talents of gold and of spices very great store and precious stones there came no more such abundance of spices as these which the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. And the navy also of Hiram that brought gold from Ophir brought in from Ophir great plenty of almug trees and precious stones. And the king made of the almug trees pillars for the house of the Lord and for the king's house harps also, and psalteries for singers. There came no such almug trees, nor was seen unto this day. And King Solomon came unto the queen of Sheba, all her desire, whatsoever she asked, beside that which Solomon gave her of his royal bounty. So she turned and went to her own country, she and her servants. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was six hundred three score and six talents of gold. Beside that he had of the merchantmen and of the traffic of the spice merchants and all and of all the kings of Arabia and of the governors of the country. And King Solomon made two hundred targets of beaten gold. Six hundred shekels of gold went to one target. And he made 300 shields of beaten gold. Three pound of gold went to one shield, and the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory and overlaid it with the best gold. The throne had six steps, and the top of the throne was round behind, and there were stays on either side on the place of the seat, and two loins stood beside the stays. And twelve lions stood there on the one side and on the other. Upon the six steps, there was not the like made in any kingdom. And all King Solomon's drinking vessels were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold. None were of silver. It was nothing accounted of in the days of Solomon. For the king had at sea a navy of Tarshish, with the navy of Hiram. Once in three years came the navy of, you know, I think that's spelled well, different. There's Tharshish and Tarshish. I think those are two different things. I apologize. Tharshish with the navy of Hiram. Once in every three, once in three years came the navy of Tharshish bringing gold and silver, ivory and apes and peacocks. So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. And all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. 
And they brought every man his present, vessels of silver and vessels of gold and garments and armor and spices, horses and mules, a rate year by year. And Solomon gathered together chariots and horsemen, and he had a thousand and four hundred chariots and twelve thousand horsemen, whom he bestowed in the cities for chariots and with the king at Jerusalem. And the king made silver to be in Jerusalem as stones, and cedars made he to be as the sycamore trees that are in the vale for abundance. And Solomon had horses brought out of Egypt and linen yarn. The king's merchants received the linen yarn at a price, and a chariot, and a chariot came up and went out of Egypt for six hundred shekels of silver, and in house every word that I could get wrong and an horse for an hundred and fifty, and so for all the kings of the Hittites, and for the kings of Syria did they bring them out by their means. We did it. We did it. That's not it. All right, we're gonna include the prayer in this video um, because it is still part of my morning and that's what we're gonna be doing right now, so. Everybody gets what they've been praying for today. I see it in the camera, but I, I don't see it. Anyway, thank you for joining us today. I know it was a little bit more hectic, but I had to get it done in order to feel good about my day, for sure. So. We made sure to get it done. And yeah, that's really all we have to say. God bless.